Hi gang, welcome to episode 2 of Sophie's Music Shuffle. Now if you're new to this channel, this video is a regular feature where I can talk about what songs I've been gravitating towards that week, whether it be a new release or an old classic or something that's a bit obscure. It could be absolutely anything and it will be very much a mixed bag. The first track I'm going to talk about today is Hoodwinker by Enter Shikari. Now this was a surprise treat. Well, I say a surprise treat is more like an angry assault on the ears, but a pleasurable one. Um, because basically they're working on an album at the moment, so you never have an expectation that something's going to come out during this period of time. Um, so it caught us all off guard, and I think that's rather a fun technique of, you know, keeping the excitement alive. They said that the album they're working on is obviously their best one to date, and you would hope any band would say that about their latest album. But with them, you really have confidence that they're gonna deliver because they never let you down, whether it be with their albums, their live show production, what they say in interviews, they're, they're a band you can rely on. So I have every faith that that statement is accurate. So this song is basically calling God out. Um, as an imposter, a phony, a charlatan, whatever word you want to use. And um, it uses some really cool phrases that you can't help but smile at because they're so British. And that's what I like about Andrew Shikari. They're not ever trying to be like American and slick. You can always hear that they're from England. And I love that. I think cheeky is in the lyrics. And um, there's not many people that could get away with saying, documentation in a song and make it work but and Shikari can do that and Ralph can do that. Apart from being great musicians writing great music I really respect and Shikari because they're very willing to talk about important issues that you know their audience should be paying attention to whether it be politics whether it be religion whether it be the healthcare system or you know whatever mental health and they do it not just in their music and their lyrics but also where possible in their interviews, um, they do it on Twitter, um, Raoul C has his amazing podcast as well which I found really important and helpful during the whole Brexit thing. But you also feel like when they do these songs that perhaps could be deemed as controversial, they're not doing it for controversial sake, they're not doing it, you know, because they want the press, although they are savvy to the fact it will get them pressed but they're doing it for the right reasons because these are genuine issues that they're passionate about and you really feel that they feel compelled to vent and release about those things it's not what i'm saying is i really feel like it's an authentic passion that they have for you know talking about these causes i don't think it's contrived in any way there's some really cool little phrases in there like shrink wrapper for mines which i particularly like and there's lots of little ways of describing, you know, the the way religion has a control over people that I think is quite interesting. Next song I'm going to talk about is from Bon Iver's new album, which I think is the third LP, and the album's called 22 A Million, and this song is called Eight, um, with circle in brackets. They've all got very bizarre names, which makes it very hard to remember what they're called, but anyway, it's quirky. It's a song that I had the most emotional connection with out of the whole record. It's probably the one that veers closer to having the more standard and expected song structure, perhaps. A lot of them, you know, they make you think that they're, they're going to be kind of a normal thing and then they go off on tangents. It's almost like they're jamming continuously and improvising and just going with, you know, where the music's taking them. Very unpredictable album as a whole, very unexpected. And it's a weird combination because some aspects are really raw, like very folky, very acoustic, very understated, bare perhaps. Um, but then at the same time it's heavily produced and you've got these synth sounds and these electronic sounds so it's that weird combination that all together just creates this beautiful and wondering and I don't know soundscape it's just it's bizarre but beautiful I don't know how else to describe it but this song um, in particular, it kind of has that beautiful quality that Streets of Philadelphia had by Bruce Springsteen where you've got this, you know, synth undercurrent, but then you've got this, but it has this vocal on top that you're really tuned into and you feel like he's really talking to you and really, you know, opening up to you. Um, and it's quite emotional. <laughs> it doesn't actually make sense, but the fact that a lot of it doesn't make sense kind of makes it 
makes sense, if that makes any sense. Oh my God, what was that sentence about? Anyway, you need to check it out. An incredible album, um, emotional, atmospheric, and you know, different. My third track is Cranes in the Sky by Solange Knowles from her new album, A Seat at the Table, which has gone number one in the Billboard charts, I believe. First of all, I wanna talk about the visuals and the creative direction of everything that's gone along with this album and this single, because the video is stunning, the styling is stunning, the choices of color, the composition of the shots, everything is just so cool and high fashion is just incredible. What I like about Solange is I feel like she's just one of those quite naturally cool people and she doesn't feel the need to push her voice so it's that kind of diva um, sound. It's not that, she's not pushing to the peak of her range. She's quite happy to be in that softer side of her voice where she's not pushing, it's quite relaxed and I find that quite soothing and kind of effortless. I've always liked those sort of voices um, the you know like the Aaliyahs and the Erica Badus and that leads me quite nicely on to my next choice which is The Roots featuring Erica Badu um, You Got Me is what the single is called. It was released in the year 2000 and it actually won a Grammy for um, best performance by a rap duo or group. Um, it was co-written by Jill Scott but at the time the record label they were with didn't think that Jill Scott was a high profile enough voice to have on it so they um, enrolled Erica Badu and she does an amazing job because she's got that such, that chill vocal, that really relaxed um, vocal. And the song overall is one of those ones that I put on if I do want to just chill out a bit. It's quite soothing, um, but has, you know, a good flow to it. I feel like some people go like, I don't like hip hop because they associate hip hop with that kind of really maybe aggressive or swear words. They're thinking of, you know, like gangster rap and stuff, but there's lots of a rap that is, you know, much more chilled out and actually quite relaxing to listen to. So if you think you would prefer that end of the scale, then maybe check this song out. Uh, my next song is by one of my all time favorite bands and that is Deftones. And this is Digital Bath, which um, was part of, I think perhaps their best album but you know that's up for debate but it's from the album White Pony which was released in the year 2000. The more I do these videos I think that the year 2000 was a great year for music. It's quite a, a slow song actually but I think it's very you know evokes a mood I think it's quite sexy and if you don't know Chino Marino's voice he's the singer he has this voice that's got kind of a very airy quality to it when he's using the soft part of his voice, um, but he also has the ability to scream and be, you know, really loud and really powerful when he goes to the, the end of the top end of his range. So he's got a really versatile voice, but he's also, he, he manages to make everything sound quite sexy. Um, you should check out his other band Crosses if you haven't as well. But yeah, this song just is powerful. I mean, there's not many lyrics in it. When you check out the lyrics on YouTube, you're, on YouTube, on um, Google, you'll see there's not many, but you don't always need to have a lot of words to say a lot. Let me know if, if you like Deftones, what's your favorite track from that album? I'd be interested to know. And finally, because I have been wanting some chill music this week, um, is Elusive by Scott Matthews. Now, I think you describe him maybe slightly bluesy, kind of folk indie, uh, plays acoustic guitar. And this is a track from his 2006 album, Passing Stranger, and the song is Elusive. Did I say that already? It's just really beautiful, and you can see that he is inspired by great lyricists um, because his lyrics are beautiful. I know that he loves Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell, who I think are great lyricists and poets um, in their own right. Um, and this is just a really beautiful, heart-wrenching song. Um, haunting, I think, as well. That's the end of this week's uh, shuffle. I've tried to keep it a little bit shorter. I don't know if I've managed that. If you're still liking these music videos, um, I'll definitely do more because I really enjoy doing them. Uh, let me know what tracks you've been enjoying and if any of these have tickled your fancy, that would be good to know as well. So. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode soon.